<laughs> oh, we love the Divas Revolution, especially when it's carried on this particular Wednesday night by Eva Marie and Team Bella. Oh, yes. <laughs> ah. There's gonna be a fight tonight. What's going on, everybody? It's your buddy. It's your pal, Spaz Phoenix, the YWC Reality Check, here with the fights on Wednesday night. And speaking of Wednesday nights, I will say, you've got until next Wednesday to get me your questions for the July... Will it still be July next week? Yeah, it'll still be July next week. For the July Ask the Phoenix. For those of you that are asking, for my buddy James, who I know is watching and I know has been messaging me on Facebook and whatever, questions in before... The Wednesday after, hold on, before I talk myself into a circle. You got the 25th of the month. Whatever Wednesday falls after the 25th of the month, that is when I do the Q&A. You have until that Wednesday to get me your questions. I'm even going to do the July Q&A in July. So yeah, that's a thing. Um... Lots of other things coming up uh, down the pike. Other than that, on our way to SummerSlam, I'm going to pretty much be doing this with you guys on Wednesday night. For those of you who have just added yourselves to this channel, I've gotten a bunch of subs this week, which is nice. Welcome to all of you and to the Facebook, uh, to the slew of new Facebook pages that are helping me post these videos on Facebook. Welcome to you as well. When there's not a Q&A, when there's not a pay-per-view coming up on that particular weekend, we do this. This is the fights on Wednesday night. This is my annual, or sorry, not annual, I should say weekly NXT slash SmackDown, because SmackDown is on Wednesdays here in Canada, review. Um, I will say, there was a couple of good points on NXT this week, but on the whole, kind of underwhelming. I'm not going to lie. I will say, although this will make me, you know thou shalt not do this in the book of YWC, SmackDown blew the water out of NXT this week, and that's just a thing. Uh, Finn Balor comes out. It's the first time he's been on NXT since the uh, Beast in the East um, special, whatever, his match against Kevin Owens and winning the NXT title. He's in the ring being interviewed by somebody, I don't know, it's whoever the NXT interviewer is this week, talks about returning to the NXT arena for the first time as champion, talks about his 15-year career, and how winning the NXT title means that one of the choices he made in his career was right, and obviously that choice was to come to NXT. He's got a rematch at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, and there's going to be a contract signing later tonight. He talks about Kevin Owens. He talks about how Kevin Owens has beaten down Hideo Tommy, beaten down Sami Zayn, beaten down Adrian Neville, beaten Cesaro, beaten John Cena, but he didn't beat me and he won't beat me in Brooklyn. That's it. Nice. Done and dusted. Quick opening promo. It's good. There's no interru interruptions. There's no interactions. It's just came out, said his piece. It was fantastic. This, I will give it to you, The to the NXT marks out there, this is the kind of opening segment we could use on Raw. Just putting that one out there. And there's mosquitoes. Fantastic. Eva fucking Murray made her in-ring NXT debut this week against Cassie. Um, Eva Marie. <laughs> Eva Marie, who, before she even comes out of the canon, we're not supposed to like because she's a product of Total Divas. But here's where we have the diametrically opposed and hypocritical portions of the book of the YWC. Because you have to love it if it's on NXT, but you can't love it if it's on Total Divas. So what do we do with Eva Marie? I got an idea. Let's let her get in the ring and actually show us what she can do before we have preconceptions. Isn't that a fantastic idea? I will say this match didn't blow me out of the water, but here we go. Call her an elbow tie-up, and they trade arm bars. And you know, you, you're going to work my arm, I'm going to work your arm. It's good. Roundhouse kicks in the corner by Cassie, who, in her own right, is pretty damn impressive. Standing vertical suplex by Eva. Seated abdominal stretch thing. And I'm going to try and explain this the best way I can. You guys know me. If I don't have a name for something, I, I'm going to make up the explanation as the best I can. If you can picture a seated abdominal stretch, but it wasn't an abdominal stretch. It was an arm bar from the seated abdominal stretch position. Um, is the best way I can. it looked pretty good and this was by Eva Marie um, 
Boot by Eva, Eva and a running Sinton. The running Sinton did look kind of sloppy, I won't lie. And then back to that, uh, that submission move that I just tried to explain. Jawjacker by Cassie and a roundhouse kick. And then another roundhouse kick. And then another, another roundhouse kick. But a hangman and a very, very Brian Kendrick-like slice bread number two gets the win for Eva. I love it. She comes out in the, in the all red, uh, almost looks like a Ric Flair robe. Uh, she's kind of soaking in the fact that people can't stand her and killing them with kindness and all that sort of thing. It's good. It's good. It, it's fine. Um, like I say, Eva Marie, not the greatest thing since sliced bread. Ha ha ha, pun intended. But not horrible. Not nearly as horrible as I was going to expect, and not nearly as horrible as I was going to have fun with in this review. Baron Corbin reminded us that he still has a job by beating what who I've written down here as the super purple jobber because he didn't get a name and he looked like his outfit kind of looked like a purple version of the Hurricane, for those of you that are out there that are old enough to remember the Hurricane. Uh, end of days in 10 seconds, Baron Corbin gets the win. Kind of anticlimactic in the sense that Baron Corbin does these quick victories, but usually when he does a quick victory in the ring, like a little squash, it's usually to set him up to say something, to call somebody out, to set himself up for his next pay-per-view match, whatever. He just did this like and left, and the announcers even said, you know, he didn't even think enough of this match to take his shirt off. I mean, I don't personally care if he takes his shirt off. He's not Lita. Lita takes her shirt off. I'm a happy kid. That's another story for another time. But this was just what it was. Samoa Joe versus Mike Rollis. Or, uh, as somebody here in the YWC, Samoa Joe versus some guy named Mike Rollis. As we find out that Samoa Joe is going to take on, take on, rather, Rhino at TakeOver Brooklyn, which is fine by me. Joe has new music. It's still not the greatest in the world. It doesn't suit him at all, but it's at least better than the other hip hoppy crap that he had before. Boots and punches by Rollis. Punches in a mud hole by Joe. Running elbow by Joe and a headbutt. Because headbutts are a thing. Corner chops by Joe. Lots of them. Boot in the, boot wash in the corner by Joe. If you don't know what a boot wash is, it's basically where you're down. Um, if you picture the um, the position that somebody would be in for a uh, not a rough rider, a uh, the Broski boot uh, by Zack Ryder. Instead of just giving him the one boot, it's basically you kick him and then you basically run your foot along his head so that your so so the, the laces of your boot sort of grate across the face. It's it's. It's a really nasty looking thing if you do it properly. It, it's reminiscent of when you're in a cage match and you get your face rubbed across the wires. Now, it's not going to cut your face open, obviously, but it can't be the most comfortable thing in the world. You're an Augie out of the corner by Joe and a muscle buster gets the win. Emma. Emma. Fucking gorgeous heel Emma with Dana Brooke in her corner takes on the returning Bailey. As Bailey's coming to the ring, they make a point on commentary of basically hitting over the head the fact that she's got this hand brace on because she's come back from an injury, her hand is still sore, which means why is she cleared to wrestle, but whatever, and she's got a wrap on her hand, so everybody pay attention to the hand is what the commentators are going for there. It's like um, on the main roster, if somebody's got uh, internal injuries or whatever and they've got the big bandage around their stomach or whatever, all the commentators will always say that it's a target. And usually the usually the bandage that they have, especially if they're trying to uh, make a point of the injury, the bandage is usually white. This was a, a, uh, a hand brace that nearly fit in with the rest of her wrestling attire, so I guess that's why the commentators brought so much attention to it, which is good. The commentators... Um, uh, Byron Saxton, Corey Graves, and Minnie Michael Cole are really good on NXT. This is a thing. I will give them credits for stuff like this. Cheap shots and a beatdown to start the match. Bailey eats three darn buckles. And then, because she's Bailey, and because she's special, she starts, um... Well, there's really only one way I can say this. She starts to Bailey up. She starts to bailey up, and you know, takes a shot, shakes, and da, 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 and I almost expected to get a you, and but we didn't do that. She just turns around and makes uh, Emma eat the turnbuckle, and then hits a bailey bulldog. Dana pulls Emma out of the ring, and Emma slams bailey. Or sorry. Dana pulls Emma out of the ring, out of the line of fire. Emma slams Bailey's hand into the post on the outside. From then on, the story is the hand, the story is the arm. It's really, really great. Emma works on Bailey's hand and arm in the ropes, tying them up, pulling them back, uh, all that sort of thing. Snapmare by the ponytail by Emma, and she goes back to working the arm. She basically sits on her back and takes her hand and starts separating out her individual fingers. And again, the commentators are like, 
are, are really good on this. The commentators are really good at, at adding to the story of the hand. Um, straight jacket choke by Emma is, is a choke and it's working the arm, but it's also working the hand if you think about how a straight jacket choke works. A top rope reverse elbow by Bailey, double double clothesline knockdown spot is, is messier than it should be. Dana grabs uh, Bailey's hand from the outside and starts ramming it into the apron side. She gets caught. She gets ejected. Belly to Bailey, which is the stupidest wrestling name I've heard in at least the past 10 years, gets the win for Bailey. And while Bailey's trying to give a promo after the match, hug Plex City chants. NXT fans are weird. Bailey comes out. She says she's she's all fine. She's all happy to be back. It's great to be back. It's great to see all the fans. Roddy, Roddy, Raw. But she needs to get back to doing what she wanted to do in the first place, proving she's the best. She wants to be the champion, but first she wants to face Charlotte. Now, I get that Charlotte having the lineage that she has and having the success that she's had in NXT is, is a pretty good measuring stick. But if you want the champion, why wouldn't you call out the champion? That's just a thought. Um... In the back, we see a video package of Charlotte's victories at Battleground and on Raw. Charlotte accepts Bailey's challenge. Dana comes and talks some shit. Charlotte talks some shit back. Apparently, they're going to have a match at some point. The VOD Villains versus Angelo Dawkins and Sawyer Fulton. I really tried to care. I really did, because the VOD Villains are the number one contenders. They're getting their tag title shot next week against Blake and Murphy, who I also don't care about. Here is prime time example of the problem that I think NXT is going to have very, very shortly. Um, the three best divas you have move to the main roster. Owens is on the main roster. Sami Zayn is going to move to the main roster. Neville's already on the main roster. More mosquitoes. Why? Why is this a thing? Um, Sami Zayn, uh, sorry, not Sami Zayn. Hideo Itami is still injured. Um, Everything that brought me to your show is either on the shelf or moved up to Raw. You need to start making me give a shit. The only, like, we're going to get to a point where the only reason I'm watching is for Emma and, uh, and Enzo and Big Cass. And that's not a good thing, because neither one of them are in this match. Vaudevillains versus Dawkins and Fulton, like I said. A springboard small package by Gotch to start the match is an interesting little thing. Fulton pounds on Gotch and gets him in an abdominal stretch. Um, so, uh, Dawkins tags in. They do, I, I guess what you would call a doomsday dropkick spot. Uh, one holds them in the uh, atomic drop position while the other one hits a dropkick from the high high elevated position. And then we go back and Dawkins puts on the abdominal stretch. Gotch turns it around. And here's, here's one I will say for originality. Gotch has one of these guys in a headlock, in a front headlock. So he's got him by the head. He, he sort of awkwardly picks up his own foot and starts beating him in the head with his foot. It's not a kick because you can't kick from that position, but he's basically got his hand, got, got, he's reached down, he's grabbed his own foot and he's hitting the guy in the head with it. It's very, very awkward with the way that the VOD villains are awkward. Anyway, it kind of works, but it's just, I will say, a plus for originality. Jabs and knees by Aiden English. Aiden English hits a side effect, which is nice. Their their double team finishing move, which is apparently called the Whirly Dervish, gets the win for the VOD Villains. Obviously, the VOD Villains were going to win because I don't care about the other two, and these guys have a title match coming up. But Jesus Christ, give me right now, right now, the best things we have going on on this show are heal Emma because she's fucking gorgeous and an opening promo spot from Finn Balor. Speaking of Finn Balor, we've got the contract signing. Regal comes out, brings out Owens, brings out Balor. Owens grabs the stick. How does it feel to be champion? This is the biggest This is the biggest main event rematch in NXT history, talking about uh, TakeOver Brooklyn. Um, you're the champ and you're the underdog. How does that feel? How That's got to be interesting. I was the champ two months in. I crippled Sami Zayn. I hurt, I hurt Adrian Neville. I sent him running to Raw. And yes, I beat John Cena. You're right about all of these things. In Brooklyn, I'm going to show you that Japan was a fluke. Balor says he like that you, he likes to talk. He's going to shove his words down his throat in Brooklyn. Owens proceeds to beat, take a couple cheap shots at Regal. Balor fights back. Owens bails and we end the show. Um, a very lackluster take on what we what has become a very predictable uh, cliche, which is the contract signing. But it's just you feel like they were building up to something that never really got off the ground, and that's really how this whole show felt. I like NXT, guys. You guys know this. I'm a big uh, 
big proponent of NXT. That's why the Wednesday night SmackDown reviews became the fights on Wednesday night. But this one, I, I got, this one missed the mark, guys. I'm just I'm putting that out there, and I'm not shitting on the show per se. The VOD villains got to go out and show what they can do because they have a title match coming up. The Divas are doing their thing. Even Marie's big comeback was was a big selling point for this week, and uh, we saw Finn Balor for the first time after winning his title. So it was sort of like. NXT was a checklist. We hit all the points, so we think it's a good show, but there's nothing that sticks out on this show. Like I say, even the 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 awesome return of Finn Balor and the ridiculously hot Emma cannot save this show, guys. This was a very, very disappointing episode of NXT. SmackDown, on the other hand, starts off hot and heavy with the announcement that we were going to get Rusev versus Owens tonight, the Bellas versus Sasha Banks and Naomi to which I wait with bated breath for people to tell me that I'm a racist because I don't like Naomi. It, not, it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that she sucks or anything. And Cesaro facing the WWE World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins. But we start the night with a big promo package about the Wyatts and the former Shield, uh, you know, focusing on Dean Ambrose, etc., which you figure is going to lead to Dean Ambrose versus Luke Harper, but it leads to Luke Harper or sorry, Dean Ambrose versus Sheamus. For reasons. Anyways, Collar and Elbow tie up and a lot of chain mat wrestling to start. And Sheamus bails. Test of strength, booting, and a couple of uppercuts by Sheamus. Ambrose with a kitchen sink, a double drop kick, and tosses Sheamus out of the ring. Tornado DDT off the apron onto the floor by Ambrose sends us nicely, and I do mean nicely, into commercial break. Ambrose headbutts Sheamus off the second rope, which is cool. Sheamus works on Ambrose's knee, which is a story that has been going on since Money in the Bank, which is. Fuck, this is why Ambrose is great. A Brock lock by Sheamus that transitions almost seamlessly, I gotta give him credit for this, into a Batista bomb, which transitions quite seamlessly into a half crab. We're working the leg, we're working the back, we're working the leg some more. It's great. Both men trade punches, running elbow by Ambrose. Sheamus tries for a brogue kick. Ambrose low bridges him. Sheamus basically tosses himself out of the ring. Suicide dive by Ambrose in a standing... Uh, that standing elbow drop thing that he does, and why do we have mosquitoes? We get the jump scare, we get the lights out, we get the Wyatt music, we get Wyatt on the rampway with the lantern. We turn up the lights, we've got Harper standing on the commentator table, just standing there being Luke Harper. We got Sheamus on the outside of the ring with a nice brogue kick for Ambrose. Another brogue kick once they get back inside the ring, and Sheamus gets the win. No problem with this whatsoever because it leads to what I was saying on Monday, Luke Harper and Bray Wyatt versus Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns for SummerSlam. Just go ahead and book it. Next up, we, we have a little uh, video repackaging of the, the matches between Neville and Stardust, and they're really, they're really pushing heavily the idea that this is a comic book feud, and there's a comic book, uh, what do you call it, filter on all the, uh, on all the video packages. It's a, it's a cool little thing. Apparently, there's some guy from some show that's going to face Stardust at SummerSlam. If you're going to do this, and if you're going to use Neville to promote it, why wouldn't you just have Stardust versus Neville at SummerSlam? No, no because we have to do celebrity stuff. But Adam Rose versus Neville is up next. Starts off with a collar and elbow tie-up and an arm bar by Rose, a mud hole by Rose in two different corners. Basically, he mud hole stomps him in one corner, picks him up, tosses him to the opposite corner, and mud hole stomps him again because he can. Snap vertical suplex by Rose is really nice, really crisp and all that sort of thing. I will. I, th there's a reason I give Adam Rose all the credit that I do. And there's a reason that I stopped to really emphasize his offense, because his gimmick and the way people shit on his gimmick take away from the fact that this guy, in the ring, when he turns it up, is fantastic. The gimmick is unfortunate, yes. Absolutely. It's like, um... Jack Swagger, who's fucking phenomenal in the ring and never had a gimmick get off the ground. This is why I this is why I pay so much attention to guys like Adam Rose. Um, second rope jumping head scissor, but not by Neville. It's by Rose, and even the commentators say, "Look, he's trying to take a page out of Neville's book," which is nice. Attempted suicide dive by Rose is blocked by Neville. But, you know stopped before it got going, that sort of idea. Lots and lots and lots of kicks and a drop kick by Neville, a pendulum kick by Neville, a springboard moonsault to the outside by Neville, and a red arrow inside by Neville. Get the win for, you guessed it, Neville. Stardust mocks him on the Tron with a very, very creepy promo that is sort of half crazy, half Dusty Rhodes, and half supervillain. I... Go back and watch it, it's good. We show, because WWE is always good at stuff like this, they're always good at the video packages and the editing and the presentation and all that sort of thing. Um, 
a really great highlight package of Sasha Banks, which is nice because we know we've got the tag team match coming up later tonight. Wade Barrett comes out and talks some shit. King Barrett, Bad News Barrett, whatever. Apparently one of Vince, Vince's new rules, sorry, my chair's doing its thing, is that we can't use the word or the name Wade. But we'll see how long that lasts because we're also apparently not allowed to use the word backbreaker, but that's happened just about every week since that news came out. Kevin Owens versus Rusev. Both men trade punches. Owens bails immediately. We have, we have a, sorry, I shouldn't say immediately. We have a pretty good couple of minutes with these guys just trading punches. These guys are big and bad. Kevin Owens and Rusev, you know, the proverbial two Mack trucks running into each other. We go to commercial break as Owens bails. Vertical suplex by Rusev when we come back. Running elbow by Owens and boots. Rusev splash against... The he, he doesn't get him in the turnbuckle. He gets him against the ropes and splashes him against the ropes, which, because it's not solid like the turnbuckle, looks really awkward and therefore, I presume, a lot more painful. Fallaway slam by Rusev is pretty impressive, and the commentators here on SmackDown do a great job of just pointing, just reminding us over and over and over again how massive these guys are and how, um, how, um, how hard they would be to move each other around sort of thing. There's a point in the match where, I don't remember where exactly it is in the match, I won't lie, but where Owens is pulling Rusev away from the ropes because he's going for a pin cover. He's like, he's like lose some weight! And, and that's a nice touch because he's showing his frustration and it's it's great, it's good. Rusev eats turnbuckles, Owens hits a super kick and a cannonball, clotheslines by Owens, and a headlock because he's a bad guy. Codebreaker by Owens, which is nice, takes us into another headlock to remind us again that he's a bad guy. Owens is another one of those nice guys. Both men trade punch and kicks by Rusev, back suplex by Rusev, a flying leg lariat by Rusev, and a super kick. Owens manages to escape the accolade and bail. Um, Rusev wins by KO. This makes sense because the promo he did before the match, I didn't really talk about, but basically it was saying that he did not surrender at Battleground. He lived to fight another day because that's what smart people do. That's what people who are trying to maintain their career and provide for their families do. Um, and I guess they're going to play up on that for a little while. He's going to um, take the opportunity to leave matches when things aren't going his way, and that will be his reasoning. He's living to fight another day. He's uh, continuing uninjured to support his family. As a, as, a, as a set of heel logic, I don't mind that. It's really, really good. It's a really twisted way to look at it and say, like, hey, I totally fucking bailed, but it's okay because of this. The Bellas versus Sasha Banks and Naomi. We start off with Naomi and Nikki in the ring with a collar and elbow tie. A slam by Nick. Why mosquitoes? Just why does this need? Why does summer need to be a thing? Not summer ray. Summer ray is fine, but why does summer need? Slam by Nikki. As as I, I digress. Um, spine buster by Nikki. Double team pancake by the Bellas on Naomi is nice because if there's one thing I really really want to see is Naomi falling on her face. Nikki hits a low drop kick to Sasha, um, and then she does this thing, which I think is really cool. She leg scissors Sasha's head into a choke, but because she's doing the choke with her legs, with her upper body, she's just sitting there doing Scott Steiner style push-ups. <laughs> I like it. It's good. I've got you exactly where I want you. Look at me go fucking, oh, fucking, sometimes the Bellas are just good. Face buster by Nikki. Top rope missile drop, <laughs> sorry. In, in in succession, a face buster by Nikki and a top rope missile drop kick by Brie to uh, to Sasha. Tamina saves Sasha from the Brie mode running knee and a super kick uh, super kick on the outside to to somebody that I didn't write down because I'm special by Tamina. Coming back from commercial break, we have a mud hole by Naomi and a leg drop because these things are hard. A botchy as fuck bulldog by Naomi, but the match is saved when she tags in Sasha Banks and Sasha Banks hits that wicked corner gut check maneuver that she does. Straight jacket choke with a post by Sasha Banks is nice. Corner spear by Sasha. Brie drop kicks Naomi off the apron, which is nice because I think she hit her face on the way down. Nikki hits rolling clotheslines to Naomi and a nice back body drop. Alabama slam by Nikki. Sasha spears Nikki. Brie hits a Thetis press on Sasha. Brie and Alicia Fox on the outside take down Sasha and Naomi on the outside. Chocolate flying camel toe of death misses and we get the rack attack and we get a win for the Bellas and all the NXT fans cry. Oh yes they do. If you listen to the crowd tonight, I hate to break it to you, Team Bella were the baby faces in this match and it was great and it's okay. Look, look, see, see the walls and ceiling of WWE did not fall. The pillars didn't crumble because the Bellas won a match. It's gonna be okay. I promise you. 
Rollins and Cesaro is your main event. Rollins and Cesaro as a main event should be on Raw. Let's be real. Should be on a pay-per-view. <sighs> Let's be real. Why mosquitoes? Freaking just... Take me to a place where it's never summer. Never, never, never summer. Rollins bails right away. Leg pick and a roll up by Cesaro. Gorilla press slam by Cesaro. And a suicide dive by Rollins. Take us into the first commercial break. Headlock and a body scissor by Rollins. Stroke into the second rope by Rollins. And I'm sure Preston loved it. Rollins rides a headlock for a while because he's a bad guy. Side suplex by Cesaro. Overhead release. Fisherman suplex by Cesaro. Lots and lots and lots of corner uppercuts by Cesaro. You know what I mean by that. Whip him into the corner. Uppercut. Whip him into the other corner. Uppercut. Repeat as necessary. Lather, rinse, repeat. Cradle vertical suplex by Cesaro. It's nice. Double foot stomp by Cesaro. A top rope crossbody by Cesaro. Gets rolled through by Rollins and it leads us into a nice uh, several pinning sequence revert several pin attempt reversal sequence there we go a low super kick by Rollins and we get the sorry not quite there yet we get a springboard second rope sunset flip post to post turnbuckle power bomb obviously by Rollins sharpshooter by Cesaro transitions into a cross face by Cesaro Insiguri by Rollins a rebound a press and an uppercut by Cesaro Rollins tries to bail he gets met with an uppercut on the outside an uppercut on the inside as well by Cesaro uppercuts all over the shop but a thumb to the eye Cesaro eating post and a pedigree gets the win for Rollins no interference no authority no bullshit this match was great Rollins won by Healy means because he's a heel he takes his win he, he he goes up the ramp. I hope we get this again. I really, really do. But uh, we're not going to get it at SummerSlam because uh, I think we know what Cesaro is going to be doing at SummerSlam because Kevin Owens comes down, takes Cesaro, who's already been beaten down, who's already received a turnbuckle powerbomb, gives him more of a beatdown, a pop-up powerbomb, and that's how we end the show. <sighs> Guys, we got the Diva story going forward to SummerSlam. I think... From this, we can guess that we have Owens versus Zaro going to SummerSlam. We got John Cena versus Seth Rollins going into SummerSlam, which Jalex Man is crying about, which just makes me happy. And we've got Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar. Now, combine that with we already know what the night before's main event is going to be with Finn Balor and uh, and Kevin Owens for the NXT Championship in Brooklyn. That's going to be one amazing weekend of wrestling, and I hope you guys are really excited. I hope you I hope you get where I'm coming from with this. I hope you get why I'm okay that the Bellas won a tag team match tonight. I hope you get why I hold NXT to such a high standard that I say that they fell down tonight. I hope you understand why I say SmackDown beat NXT tonight. They did more, and they did it better. That's a fact. That's not me slighting NXT, that's just a fact. NXT, sorry, SmackDown was a better show tonight. And part of that is because I've come to expect so much from NXT, and I just didn't get it tonight. That's about it. Uh, I know a lot of the things I've said in this review are going to get me a lot of shit. Bring it on. You guys know you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and all those other uh, things. But, on a more positive note, please, uh, as I say, you've got one more week to get me the questions for the Q&A. Um, you guys know, I've said it a million times, it's one of my favorite things that I do in the month, along with the Tackle Panel. Uh, you guys make it great. Uh, without you, I don't have a Q&A. And uh, you guys never let me down. So thank you for that. Thank you in advance. This time next week, you will be seeing the July edition of Ask the Phoenix. Um, Put it down in the box below. What are you guys thinking very p preliminarily about the uh, the road we, ha we are on to SummerSlam? Are you as excited as I am? Or do you need more convincing? Uh, let me know your thoughts on the Diva Revolution and where you think it's skewed tonight. Or if you agree with me that, you know, the Bella's winning isn't the end of the world. Um, put it all down in the box below. And uh, that's about it. I've been Spaz, your YWC Reality Check. Subscribe up there, talk down there, start a conversation, keep all these conversations going. Don't be a stranger. I'll talk to each and every last one of you later. But for right now, I'm tagging out. Bye, guys.